Davis Show, I Married Joan, America's favorite comedy show, starring America's queen of comedy, Joan Davis, as Mrs. Joan Stevens. And featuring Jim Backus as Judge Bradley Stevens. My toast bad. No, thank you. I'll get you some more coffee. This will do nicely, thank you. Well, how about... No, thank you. Brad, you haven't said a pleasant word to me all morning. If you'll only... If you don't mind, I would rather not discuss it. Brad, I'm sorry. I promise I'll never do it again. Never. Well... Oh, Brad, darling, please say that you'll forgive me. Will you give me your word you'll, you'll never do it again? My solemn word, if I live to be a thousand, honey, I'll never do it again. Oh. Brad? Yes, dear? What is it I'll never do again? <laughs> I know, Brad, I'm hot. I, I don't know what I'm apologizing for. Tell me what I did. Oh, as if you didn't know. It only happened last night. Last night? Well, let's see. Now, you came home from the office, and you were very friendly, and then I spoke to Mabel. You were still friendly, and then we had dinner. I had fried chicken. Was there something wrong with the chicken, Brad? No, no, it wasn't, Joan. It, it was much later. At Helen's house. You. You and that, that Chuck Albright. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, Brad, you shouldn't be jealous of Chuck Albright. Oh, he's just an old school friend. Well, he didn't seem very old, the way he kissed you. Oh, honey, you're just being silly. Chuck Albright doesn't mean a thing to me. But if you must know, there was another man at the party that I'm really crazy about. Who? You. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. I shouldn't let Chuck upset me so. Well, of course you shouldn't, Angel. You're the only man in the whole world for me. Uh, oh, honey, honey, I almost forgot. I, I, I have a surprise for you. A surprise? Don't tell me what it is, darling. Is it something I'm going to wear around my neck or around my wrist, or is it going to be something that no, I... Oh, no, huh? no, dear. It isn't anything like that. It's, uh, I'm taking out more life insurance. <laughs> Yes, madam. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to get a nice gift for my husband. Now that's a lovely tie you're holding, and it'll be a dollar eighty-nine. <laughs> Not nearly good enough. I want something much better. My husband is Judge Stevens. No, oh, Judge Stevens. The judge comes in here quite often. How about this? Uh, Two forty. Not good enough. Something better. <laughs> you see, he was so nice about Chuck Albright. Of course, he is an old friend, and it was only a good night kiss. It meant nothing. But you know how some husbands would be. Of course, I will admit that Brad was a little jealous. But after all, the way Chuck carried on, it was only... Ne Please, if you don't mind, this happens to be quite personal. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> about a shirt, tie, and handkerchief combination? That's very smart. Oh, that's more like it. Mm, I have some other colors here. There's blue and baby pink and... Do you think the judge would like that? <laughs> I was just admiring this coat. Uh, could you wait on me? I'm in an awful hurry. I'm uh, very sorry. I'm in shirts and ties. There'll be someone here in a moment. <gasps> Say, I have just the thing. I'll fetch it for you, Mrs. Yeah. Stevens. Uh, will you pardon me? Oh, I don't know. I, I hate to buy anything for my wife. It's always wrong. Well, why don't you get your wife to pick out the coat herself? Oh, I couldn't do that. This is a surprise. I'm buying her a present. Oh, I'm getting my husband a present. Oh, I've got the sweetest little wife in the world. Oh, my husband is wonderful, too. You see, I've been working nights, and she never complains. Brad was very understanding about Chuck Albright. Night after night, I've been stuck in that hospital and never a peep out of him. Oh, you're a doctor. I'm a veterinarian. I have a dog and cat hospital over here on Pine Road. Oh, I love dogs. You do? Yes. Well, say, you know, I've been in this business so long, I can almost tell what kind of a dog a person owns just by looking at him. You can? I really can. Now, uh, take you. Now, I'd say um, you look like a uh, wire-haired terrier to me. <laughs> uh, you know
you're not a shaza. Uh, <laughs> fashionable, I suppose, like a poodle. No, I don't own a dog. You don't own a dog. Oh. Oh, oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> hey, Mr. Sales Lady, I need some help. Say, mister, if you would like a woman's suggestion, Ooh. how about this coat right here, huh? Say, that is nice. That is nice. But I, I couldn't tell just by looking. You see, my wife is taller. Yeah, well, this is a short dummy. Yeah, well, she's more on your size. Your wife or the dummy? <laughs> oh, my wife. Yes, you see, she's sort of a... She wears a little... Uh, like the family across. Well, They're always bringing up this stuff. Well, with well the... maybe if I tried it on oh, for would you, you could get a better idea. I'd be oh, happy I'd to. I like that. Huh? Isn't it smart? Like say, say that, that is beautiful. I like really, it. that's beautiful. You know something? Huh? I'm going to buy that coat. Well, I think you made a wonderful choice. Really, I do. <laughs> Randolph Fisher! Genevieve, what are you doing here? So, this is the sick cocker spaniel you've been spending your evenings with. <laughs> I knew I should have gotten a new permit. I'm not <laughs> now, Genevieve. I've been suspicious of you lately, and I finally decided to follow you. Now, look, lady, you don't... I have to wear this old rag. And he buys you an expensive coat like that. Now, honey, I was oh, buying the... Don't insult my intelligence by telling me you were buying it for me. I was. Well, it's true. No. But, but, but... You homebreaker! Why, I'm Mrs. Stevens. I know. So, you're a married woman. You should be ashamed of yourself. Now, Genevieve, if you just listen don't to me... Don't you talk to me, you worm. Okay, Mrs. Stevens. I am going to sue you for alienation of affections, stealing my husband, breaking up my home. I am going to let the whole world know exactly the kind of woman you are. Genevieve, sweetheart! Jenny! <laughs> oh, oh dear. The judge will love this. That's what you think. <laughs> Chuck Albright just kissed me goodnight. Then take it off. <laughs> Brad. Brad? Honey, uh, honey, you're a judge. Uh, tell me something. Uh, what do you know about alienation of affections? Hmm? I said, what, what do you know about alienation of affections? Well, all I know is you're alienating my affections by not letting me read this murder mystery. Brad, please. Okay, dear. What is it? Well, honey, uh, uh, this woman... The what woman? A woman? What difference does it make what woman? Uh, a friend of yours? Yeah. I'm... Just as I thought. You know, dear, I get so sick and tired of people trying to chisel free legal advice. If your friend has a problem, tell her to go see a reputable lawyer. There, give me that book. Now, come on. Come, Joan, 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 hand it up. That's not... There, there, all right. All right. Okay, but I'm going to tell you who committed the murder. Oh, no. Unless no. you're willing to discuss my friend's problem. Uh, absolutely not. Okay, the killer... Oh, don't go! Will you discuss? But it, it, it's blackmail. No, it's alienation of affections. <laughs> Proceed. Well, honey, uh, you see, th uh, this woman, uh, this girl, this innocent girl, a childlike person was, was standing there with her big blue eyes, and in came this jealous wife from the husband that was the biggest. <laughs> it doesn't matter if your friend is innocent. You see, in alienation of affection cases, there, there's so much mudslinging that before it's over, everybody gets messed up. The husband, the wife, your friend's husband, if she has one. She has one. Well, my advice is, you tell your friend to go to the other woman and ask her to forget about the whole thing for the sake of everyone concerned. That's exactly what I'll do. I mean, that's exactly what I'll <laughs> tell my poor innocent friend to do. Okay, dear. Now let me get back to my book. Oh, oh Brad, you're a dull. <laughs> you know, honey, even though I threatened it, I never would have had the heart to tell you that it was the brother-in-law who committed the murder. <laughs> Oh, hello. Lady, what are you doing here? 
Don't I have enough trouble without you coming to my own home? Uh, I didn't come to see you. I came to see your wife. The party whose alienations I'm affecting. My wife? <laughs> yes, where is she? She's not here. She's out shopping. Oh, well, then I'll simply have to wait for her. It's very important, and I don't want to miss her. Lady, now listen to me. I've just spent the most miserable night of my life. I've got a Pomeranian in Pasadena with a mysterious melody. A sick cow in Van Nuys is so bad, this thing, I should be there right now with the... You should see it. I think it's dead, and my wife is all nerved up. If she ever walks in here now, she's just liable to... Look, she'll be here any minute. Come on, you've got to get out of here before no, my wife gets no, home. No, no, I simply must talk to her. You see, it's for her own good. But it's only logical. If she sues me for alienation of affections, there'll be so much mudslinging that everybody's going to get messed up. Sister. She won't listen to you. Now, come on, get out of here. You've got to get out of here before my wife gets home, no, I tell you. Please, Mr. Oh, Fisher, now listen to me. No, I I no. <laughs> I've talked to you two again, and this time in my own home. Mrs. Fisher, I promise you, this is the last time you'll catch me. From now on, I'll be very careful. <laughs> you crazy siren. I suppose you can prove this is all innocent. That I can. And can you also say you never saw my husband before yesterday? That I can. Well, you just tell it to the judge. <laughs> no, that I can't. That I can't. <laughs> Maybe I could handle it this way. If I just say, uh, Brad... Do you remember that alien I told you about that was caught being affectionate with that jealous woman? And he'll say, uh, Honey, I trust you. Don't worry about that other woman. I know there's nothing to it. And I'll say, There isn't? And he'll say, Nah! There, now you see how easy that was? Oh, you're right, Mabel. I'm glad now that Brad knows. I don't like to hear that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Supposing it isn't as easy as all that. Suppose Brad doesn't say, nah. Supposing he says, what? <laughs> and I'll say, well, Brad, how can you yell at me that way after all we've meant to each other? And then I'll try to come closer to him. But suppose he pushes me away. I fall to my knees. And I said, Brad, Brad, is that all our marriage means to you? Are all those happy memories just faded away? Brad, Brad, speak to me. Brad, Brad, please say something. Brad, you're hurting me. Brad, you're stepping on my wedding ring. <laughs> like Brad acting like that. I never would have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> oh, uh... Joan, I, uh, uh... I don't speak to me, you beast. The whole ham here, I... <laughs> What's the matter with her? I never mix in family quarrels. Well, I have to see about my insurance policy. I'll take this up with you later. You see that? He's furious, and I haven't even told him anything yet. <laughs> well, you don't understand. Mabel, what am I going to do? You can use the sink now. I can use the sink? <laughs> well, I, I go in here now, and I'll, uh, I'll fix the doorknob, huh? Okay, George. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Fisher. Uh, you sound excited. What? At 3 o'clock? Well, well, I don't know. Meanwhile, keep a light burning in the kennel. I think I'm going to lose my happy home. Now, what's going to happen at 3 o'clock? Oh, Mabel, the doctor's wife is going to come over here, and she's going to spill the whole story to Brad. She's going to accuse me of stealing her husband's affections. It's 1 o'clock now. That gives me two hours to pack and make a reservation for South America. Joan, <laughs> this is the best thing that could have happened. Now what we have to do is let Mrs. Fisher see how much in love you and your husband are. Then she'll realize the whole thing is a mistake and that you're not after her husband. Oh, yeah, Mabel, but I'd have to tell Brad that way and I won't... No, you won't. You can use my husband for your husband. Charlie! Oh, you welcome to this. Why not? That's what friends are for. Charlie won't mind and he's a pretty good actor. You should have seen the performance he gave when a traffic cop tried to hand him a ticket last week. Well, maybe you got something there, Mabel. And, honey, if you ever need another husband, just holler and I'll let you borrow Brad. I'll get him over here right away so you can start rehearsing him. Yes, dear. Okay, Mabel, now let's rehearse it. Remember, you're Mrs. Fisher, the doctor's jealous wife. Okay, I've just come in. Whoa! Why, Mrs. Fisher, this is a surprise. I want you to meet the only man I've ever loved, to whom I've been married for ten years, and the reason why I would never look at another man, my husband, Judge Bradley J. Stevens. How do you do, Judge Stevens? Has your wife told you that I am suing her for alienation of affections? I know the whole story, Mrs. Fisher, and it's inconceivable that my wife could fall in love with any other man when she has me. <laughs> but, Judge Stevens, I saw 
saw them together twice. Merely a coincidence, I assure you. Would you like a cigar, dear? Thank you, my pet. And Judge Stevens, doesn't it mean anything to you that your wife and my husband were alone together in my apartment? Madam, my wife is too devoted, adores me far too much for me to place any significance on anything like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Darling, do you realize it's been five minutes since you've kissed me? Sweetheart, please forgive me. I don't know what I could have been thinking of. <laughs> Oh, Brad. And, darling, here's another kiss to make up for the one I forgot. <laughs> oh, Charlie. That's enough of that, Casanova. I was only trying to convince Mrs. Fisher that Joan and I were in love. Well, you practically convinced me. Come on, I'm taking you home. Oh, Mrs. Fisher, I mean, Mabel, you, you can't take a, a, a brand, Charlie home right now. But where else will I get a loving husband by 3 o'clock? <laughs> no problem. And you'll be lucky if you don't have another alienation of affection suit on your hands. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, I swallowed my pride. What else is left? Here's your old doorknob. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the threads were worn off and I had to put a new one on the door. Don't you want the whole knob? No, you can keep it. Maybe you can sell it to a used doorknob lot. Oh, thanks, thanks. Yes, uh, uh, I'm going to hang this pole now. <laughs> I'll be too soon. Dr. Fisher, you shouldn't come here. I don't want to keep alienating your affections. Now, look, look, I'm, I'm not going to stay. I just came to tell you my wife isn't waiting till 3 o'clock to come here. She's on her way now. No. Yes. Oh, and I haven't got a husband ready. Oh, doctor, am I sick? Have you got something in there for human beings? Believe me, uh, I am not. Mrs. Stevens, that's for a horse. <laughs> oh, hello, Joni. <laughs> hello. Oh, uh, who's this? Uh, yeah, who is this? Uh, yeah, who am I? Uh, this, uh, this, this is Dr. Fisher. Oh, Dr. Fisher. Yeah, from the doing? insurance company. I, I was waiting at the office, and here he is at the house. I guess we got the signals mixed, you know? You were waiting for him? <laughs> oh, yeah, to examine me for the uh, new policy. You know, oh, yes, I, of course. Yeah. I, I, uh, the doctor was just telling me that uh, you got your appointments mixed, uh, weren't you, doctor? Uh, yes, <laughs> Well, Brad, why don't you take the doctor into the bedroom and he can examine you in there? Joni, that's a wonderful idea. Will you uh, follow me, doctor? <laughs> Want to warn you, though, I'm healthy and my family. We can live forever. Keep him in there as long as you can. <laughs> now, Judge Stevens, if you'll just take off your jacket, okay. we'll have a look at your heart. Okay. Ever have any trouble with it? No, we get along fine together. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, uh, let me see now. Here we are. Well, say, yeah, say. Mm -hmm. all righty. Now let's see how it reacts to a little exercise. Uh, 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 say you uh, raise your legs one at a time like you're running. Oh, running? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, well, how's this? That's good. A little faster, please. Very important. Uh, is this uh, is this better? Just keep it up. <laughs> how long do I have to keep this up? Well, until the coast is clear. How's that? I said until your pulse is clear. Pulse. Is clear. <laughs> Get shape. Oh. But, Mabel, you can't leave me in this lurch. Why, well, that woman is on her way over here now. Please lend me Charlie again. Please, Mabel. Hold the wire, Mabel. But, honestly, if, if you just... You don't... I'm here to collect for the milk, Miss Stevens, and you, and you had an extra dozen eggs last week. It brings it to an even seven and a half. Uh, yeah, well, just a minute, Mr. Owens. Uh, that, 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 that was the milkman, Mabel. Please, Mabel, I, listen, I, believe me, I have no designs on Charlie. Uh, if he was the last man on earth, I wouldn't be caught dead with him. No, I, I didn't mean it that way. I adore Charlie, only I can't stand him, Miss Stevens. Miss Stevens, the bill, I got other calls to make. Uh, yes, uh, uh, huh? Just a minute, Mabel. Uh oh, incidentally, incidentally, Miss Stevens, the company put in a new line of cheeses and a new ice cream. So if you give me an order, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, well, this is a very important call, Mr. Owens. Just a little bit. Mabel, honestly, you, you've just got to lend me, Charlie. If, if that woman gets here and I can't produce a... <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Mr. Owens? You've got to be my husband a little while. But, Mr. Stevens, I, I'm a married man. What will I tell my wife? Oh, you don't have to tell her anything. I just want you to pretend that you're my husband, huh? It's a big order. But I'm buying 10 pounds of your new cheese. That's a pretty big order, too. 10 pounds, huh? <laughs> Look, just put on my husband's dressing gown. Mm -hmm. You won't be mine. Now, just, just here, here we are, Mr. Owens. I'm the 10 pounds. I mean, the... 
Let's keep it up, Judge. It's very important we get the proper reaction, you know. Just keep it up. Now remember, 20 pounds of cheese and two gallons of ice cream, right? Yeah, do a good job, and I'll let you throw in a crate of eggs. Oh. Mrs. Stevens, I've got to get out of here. Uh, well, you better get back in there and keep my husband in the bedroom. Who's this? Uh, that's my new husband. Your what? Get back at your wife. Oh! Mrs. Stevens, I came here to speak to your husband. Well, Mrs. Fisher, what a surprise. Do come in and sit down, won't you? Wow, how nice. Oh, I would like you to meet... <laughs> I would like you to meet the only man that I have ever loved, to whom I have been married for ten years, and the reason I would never look at another man, my husband, Judge Bradley J. Stevens. How do you do? I do. Yeah, well, we're not like most married couples. We're very happy together, aren't we, darling? Gallon of yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Stevens, are you aware of your wife's conduct recently? Oh, the judge is aware of everything. My, you'd have to get up very early to get ahead of him, wouldn't she, darling? I get up at 4.30 every morning. <laughs> because we can be together longer that way, you see. <laughs> Perhaps you won't be together so much when I tell him how you've been carrying on with my husband. <laughs> oh, that? Well, the judge knows that that's just a coincidence. He trusts me. Don't you, darling? Yeah, well, I do, but the company likes cash. You see, here's the way... <laughs> This is enough exercise for a horse. How long do I have to keep this up? I'll just about another mile of 16th, then I'll wrap your legs. <laughs> so you see, Mrs. Fisher, any woman that's as madly in love with her husband as I am couldn't possibly carry on with another man. Mm. Another gallon of cream. Sweet or sour. Half and half. Sweet or sour, half and half? Well, that's a little language of our own. We used it instead of pig Latin. <laughs> Well, I must say, you seem happily married. <laughs> I'm sorry I jumped to the wrong conclusion. Oh, well, Mrs. Fisher, it's all right as long as there's been no harm done. <laughs> All's well that ends well, I always say. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, boy, my daughter, can I go now? Yeah, uh, you better go out the back door, will you please? Get, get out the back. <laughs> Judge Stevens, you've got the heart of a bulldog. <laughs> Is she gone? Yes, yes, she's gone. And she apologized, and she's going to drop the whole thing. Oh, Mrs. Stevens, how can I ever thank you? Mm -hmm. I forgot. <laughs> You've been here all the time, you unfaithful scoundrel. Both of you carrying on behind my back while I was right here in the same house with you. Mrs. Stevens, you shameless hussy. Now, listen, Mrs. Fisher, I happen to be very much in love with my husband. If he was here now... Joan, I'm, I'm certainly so... glad I got back in time. Is that the woman who thinks you're unfaithful to me? <laughs> Madam, you are under a serious delusion. Joan and I love each other. Well, not now, not now, child. <laughs> Boy, it's hot in that closet. Do you think you'd be needing me anymore? No, I think that did it. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> Female Bluebeard, I'm not staying in this house another minute. Oh, Joni, uh, Joni, where's, where's my word? <laughs> Please believe me, Brad. I, I can explain everything. You see, the, the Mrs. Fisher thought that I was the Cocker Spaniel that the doctor was trying to date. And I wouldn't have had to borrow the milkman if Mabel didn't get jealous when she saw me kissing Charlie like this. No, no, Charlie. <laughs> what have you got to say about this? Oh, Charlie. <laughs>